For some reason, I don't know why, but I had a good feeling about this one. And yeah, it did not deliver at all. It's just not very good. Now, there are a few good things about it, but very few. Nowhere near enough to make up for the overall stupidity of this thing. First of all, the movie starts with the song Winds of Change, playing before there's even anything on screen. And then the song kind of fades out before anything starts happening. So the cynic in me says, oh, so it's just there because people recognize it and some people like it. And the less cynical part of me says, yeah, that's probably it because it had no other reason to be there. Off to a great start here. However, the action sequence in the beginning with Justin Theroux is surprisingly good. It's actually exceptionally well shot. Like it's ripped straight from a great action movie. And it made me pretty hyped to see the rest of the movie. But having seen the rest of the movie, I'm wondering if that first sequence was actually shot by someone else. Because the rest of the movie isn't anywhere near as good. Not even the rest of the action is. But I really hope someone hires Justin Theroux for some sort of John Wick type movie. Because he's really good at this. Unfortunately he's barely in the movie. And it's basically about these two women who get wrapped up in this international spy game thing. Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon. And it's supposed to be a comedy, but it's not very funny. There are a lot of jokes, but it's not very funny. And a lot of it is shot like an action movie. Even a lot of the funny scenes. Like you have these scenes with this generic score from some sort of suspense thriller, but they're just supposed to be funny scenes. So you get this weird disconnect between the tone set by the score and the actual dialogue. That being said, there are a few good jokes. I laughed a handful of times, but that's not a lot in a two hour movie. And just for some context, I got about as many laughs out of Skyscraper. But Skyscraper was actually somewhat entertaining. And this really wasn't. I'm not even joking when I say I was struggling to stay awake watching this. And thank god I was sitting up, because had I been laying down, I guarantee you I would have fallen asleep. There's not a chance I would have stayed awake for the second half of this thing. It's so boring and so pointless. And it makes pretty much no sense whatsoever. And while I'm comparing this to Skyscraper, I gotta say, this was probably at least as dumb, if not dumber, than that movie. And that's saying a lot. But this thing was so ridiculously stupid, I was genuinely perplexed at one point. There's a trapeze sequence near the end, and I was sitting there trying to figure out how it got there and what purpose it could have possibly served. But for the life of me, I couldn't come up with anything remotely reasonable. Now, movies are allowed to be stupid, but at least be entertaining while you're at it. Because this just wasn't. And what's with the R rating? I was trying to figure out why this thing needed to be R-rated, and if it benefited from being R-rated. But I genuinely don't think there's any reason for it. The violence could have easily been PG-13 instead, because no one's gonna go see this for the violence. And the jokes, the raunchiest ones, just felt forced and could have easily been cut. But hey, they got a chance to show close up of some dick and balls for no apparent reason. Is that like the feminist way of making up for all the gratuitous tits in other movies? Or what exactly was the point of that? I don't know, but hey, more power to you. Although somehow I highly doubt women will go see a movie because there's dick and balls on screen for a split second. Men might watch a movie for potential boobs. Absolutely. No denying that. Women though, for a chance of some dangling nuts? I don't think so. I might be wrong though. So drop a comment if you think I got it all wrong and need to go read a book on female psychology. Oh, and I guess I could mention the quote unquote character arcs too. I mean, those were genuinely some of the flimsiest and weakest excuses for character arcs I've seen in a long time they would have been better off not even being in the movie. That's how obviously shoehorned into the script they were. And the romance? Jesus. One of the least believable and most forced romances I've seen probably in years. I mean, this whole movie is just almost offensively shallow. There's nothing to it. And just when I thought it was over, it still wasn't. There's a post credit scene, or whatever you want to call it, that's somehow even worse than the rest of the movie. I thought it couldn't get dumber, but somehow it managed. So yeah, would I recommend it? No, absolutely not. Stay away from this thing. Or don't. I'm not your dad.